edition of Talking Models. Today we conclude our look at Blackheart models and their universal monster, wall hangers. Up today, Nosferatu. This wall hanger not only is impressive in size, it's just amazing, but it's also beautifully the uh, character is captured by Jeff Yeager. All his stuff is just amazing. We have to agree, right? Well, no exception on this one. With George Stevenson teaming up with Jeff Yeager and bringing this one to life, thank you both and thank you Blackheart Models. Well today we're going to take a little bit uh, look at what I did with this one and first up we're going to kind of just uh, let you be in awe of the details that Jeff captured in this beautiful sculpt. As you can see we're going to take a look at it. You can see uh, the jacket that he wore, the detail in the hands, the nails, the amulet that he wore, uh, carried with him with the picture of his sweet lost bride. The face is just amazing. The long nose uh, that Max Shrek had in Nosferatu, the wide eyes, uh, the teeth showing, the lips, the folds of the skin, the pieces of the hair sticking out underneath his hat, the eyebrows, just everything is there, the uh, wrinkles around his eyes, everything is beautifully captured by Jeff in this uh, sculpt. I mean, just look at this thing. It is just beautiful. Then you have the hat that he wore on there, his nightcap, as I like to say. It's all in there. There's just so much detail that Jeff caught. It's a must-have piece. If you're a fan of uh, Blackheart Models wall hangers, get this one. It's just, just awe-inspiring in size. I'm going to talk just a little bit today about what I uh, did to bring this one to life. This was done a while ago. Uh, my memory isn't what it used to be, and um, I'm just going to kind of give you some details. I don't have any paints out. Just going to give you the basic colors today. Over the hat and his uh, shirt, all that was just my traditional black. Nice, uh, good coat of black. Then you can start building your colors. Uh, for his jacket, I always like to use that uh, deep red from uh, Garage US Colors. And I just simply start airbrushing it. The complete jacket area was airbrushed with that. Just to give you that red, I just love that color red from Jesse. And then over the black, it just jumps. Then, of course, with that, you want to uh, start shading it uh, with the folds and just kind of Tone it down a little bit with your transparent black. And then you got, uh, to me, the perfect red for this. His hat was also done, same combination. The uh, deep red and then uh, a bunch of shading with the transparent black. And that really finished off both pieces. Same with the tie, uh, same color, but I, on the tie, area of the scarf, I went a little bit closer with the airbrush so I could get a little deeper and a different tone from the two and just again shade it with the transparent black. But you can see that the uh, scarf stands out a little bit more from this and from this. This was a little brighter than this. So I can't went, went from very bright to semi-bright to a little bit duller and hit a little bit heavier on his uh, hat with the transparent black to tone things down. Then on the outer parts of the jacket area, it was I came in with um, the black, but again, this time I used metallic black, just because I wanted it to be a different type of black so it stood out. And as you can see, it stands out. Once you dull coat or whatever sealer you use over a metallic, it will bring it down, but you do see a stark difference in the black as you see here. Now, for his um, skin tones, variety of things, uh, I started him out over a automotive gray primer. I started just building up flesh tones. Um, for his hands, started with some pale flesh, 
and just kind of lightly mist it, all of it. Up here too, I left some of the gray primer to show through just for that dirty look after all he's dead. So I just started hitting this back and forth. Pale uh, flesh from Graduous Colors. And then what I did with that is I came in with a transparent raw umber, which is also from Graduous Colors, and misted it over the hands and the face to bring the flesh down and just give it a, a different look, almost a dirty, worn look. Then once I had that done, then I came in with pastels and I just started shading in all the areas with browns and some uh, reds, you know, just kind of mix it up a little bit. Went heavier around his eye area here to give it that sunken in distress look. Really punched that in with heavy red pastels. And then of course after that, I blew that away and then I just did a light misting of a full out red from Graduous Colors, I believe it's called True Red very lightly, just kind of missed it. A mini waltz, one, two, three, missed it. Then you can just do another light missing of uh, the original flesh tone, just kind of miss it over, watered down, just kind of miss it over the red, and you'll get this look here. So then I came in for both the head and the hands. I came in with um, the, from the Reaper line of kit from their Master Series, which is uh, suntan flesh. And for this one though, I went back and forth with the suntan flesh from Reaper. And then Reaper has the shadow suntan flesh and they have a highlight suntan flesh. So it's like a three piece, boom. So it was back and forth with the um, suntan flesh and the suntan shadow. And then after I got all the different shading and where I wanted it, I kind of just started coming in back in with my original color, which was the pale flesh, and just kind of started hitting highlights of the nose, cheeks, of the eyes, ears, bottom of the chin, below the lip, and the same on the fingers. You just punch all the highlighted areas of the skin with that color. And then once I was done with that, I came in with that transparent raw umber, and I just kind of misted it lightly, hit, punched the, uh, the lines in his face, all the crinkles, hit it a little bit with that. And then of course, if you get crazy, don't worry, you can come back in, kind of use your flesh and just lightly mist it over to calm it down. And then uh, once that was done, it was just a process of going back and forth until I uh, got the colors I was looking for. In here also, after I did all that, I came in with some more pastels. I know, a lot of work on this one. With a, almost like a transparent, um, not really, tra I'm sorry, not transparent, but the, like a burnt sienna uh, pastel. And I would punch on again all the details in his face. Heavy around the nose area, heavy in the crinkles, below his mouth, in his ears, uh, all the crinkles in the hand, heavier up by the fingertips where the nails meet. Just kind of back and forth until you get the color and the look that you're looking for. And then of course once that was done, he was uh, pretty much done as far as the flesh tones. Again, I may have went back and repeated a few of the processes until uh, I looked at it and said, mm-hmm, that's what I want. I took some of the transparent black and I punched it in above his uh, eyes below here, just really punched it in, just so it just uh, stood out and made it kind of look sunken in and made them kind of eerie, kind of dead looking. So once all that was done, over the little be uh, pieces of hair that you see in his eyebrows, I just straight up painted it with some black and then dry brushed with a light gray. And then of course you always want to go over that gray, just a little bit I do with some transparent black so it doesn't look like too stark and uh, scare everybody. So once that was done, I had that finished. I went on to his uh, teeth where rotten tooth tan was the base coat. And then I used some bleach bone tan through my uh, trusty Patriot 1, uh, 105 and just kind of hit the tips of them. His lips were uh, just pastel work with some red and some pink 
just going back and forth, back and forth till I got the color I was looking for. Now his eyes, this is one I really wanted everything to point to his eyes. So of course, uh, I started out with the uh, neutral gray. It's a great gray from Graduous Colors from Jesse. I airbrushed that gray in as my starting point. Drew in my pupil. I wanted to make them bigger. I've seen them smaller. I've seen them bigger. I wanted the vocal point to be the eyes. So I did my circle. I've described it before. Find out where you're at. Make your half moons. Complete your circle. Fill it in with some black. Then I like to come in with a pastel and just uh, take the edges of the eye and kind of feather them into the actual eye area to give it a natural feathering effect. Then for his eyes, I airbrushed first a, um, a blue. It was like a, not a dark blue, like a medium blue. I guess from the Freak Flex line, it probably was, uh, I can't even think of the name of it right now. It's a medium blue. And I just airbrushed that in, leaving a hint of that uh, black of the pupil on the outer eye. And then what I did is I came in with Freak Flex Badger Affixia Blue. And that I just punched in heavy. Left a hint of that other blue, of course the hint of the black iris. And then I just came in, started lightly on the circle. And as I got closer to the center, I moved in closer with the airbrush. It's all about the finger pressure, be careful, and just keep doing a circle and get brighter as you get into the center. Then what I did then, of course, is you take your, uh, you want your pupil. I just start where I want the pupil, small circle with a fine brush. Then I fill it in with black. And then I like to come back in with the black pastel. I go over the whole pupil with that and then I feather the edge of the pupil. And that finishes off the eye. It just gives it a nice airy look, especially on something this size. Then of course below the eyelid, inside the eye, I always come in with the red oxide and do a nice fine line along the whole bottom. And it just totally, totally completes the eye. And the last thing we did on this uh, beautiful piece was the um, fingernails, which are amazing. Those were done with rotten tooth tan. Then I uh, just came in with a little bit of bleach bone tan, airbrushed it in, and then a really good wash with uh, uh, transparent raw umber. It just kind of blended it in. And then at the bottom of the fingers, where the nail goes into the, his fingers, I hit it a little bit with a transparent dark brown, just to dirty it up. The amulet that's in his hand over black was simply dry brushing of silver. And it just, you gotta be careful, don't make it too stark. I want it to look old. So I just dry brush, not heavy, and then a little bit of, you know, overcoat with some transparent black. The chain uh, comes with it from George, uh, the part of the necklace, and there's a little picture of uh, Lucy that goes inside, and you're all set. And that, everybody, is Nosferatu from Blackheart Models. This concludes our series on the Blackheart wall hangers that I've built. George has many more. Now, uh, up next, I'm not sure. I'm almost finished with Janice the Ghoul. So I'm probably going to do a step-by-step -step on that one. A beautiful kit, an overlooked kit that you can get pretty cheap on eBay. I got mine. I think I scored that thing for $99 like uh, seven, eight months ago. Unheard of. And it's going to hang right behind me on the Janus wall when it's done. So look for that. And if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, why not? Hit it. Subscribe. Share it. This is a modeling channel that we touch on things that I've built, things that I've painted, how I did it. And we're going to do little in-between things on selecting an airbrush. We're going to do looks at all kinds of different things coming down the pike. So why not share it with your friends? Why not come on board? I'd greatly appreciate it. So thanks again for stopping in the Talking Models, and I hope you have a great day today, and may God bless your day.